<laughs> Hello and welcome to Where Gaming News. It is July. I was about to say January. <laughs> it's July 26th, 2020. And uh, we really only have one big thing we're going to talk about, which is the Xbox Game Showcase. But first, Josh, I just want to see how you're doing. Oh, by the way, my name is Nick, and across the world from me is my brother Josh. Say hi, Josh. Hi, Josh. How are you today? I am fine. It's uh, 1030 on a su- Sunday afternoon no, or it's evening. Not. It's only 730. <laughs> Uh, it is pretty late though. It feels yeah. like it's been nerdy to me, um, but uh, but yeah, you're good. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Played, um, a, played I, a board game with uh, our sister today called uh, Hella Nineties. Was it fun? It, it's like a tri- like a little trivia uh, game that's got taboo and like Pictionary and all that kind of stuff. Involved. Oh, that's fun. I'd love to play something um, like that. Uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, if you see the I curtains was, uh, moving, uh, Harvey is investigating. Uh, that's okay. As long as he's quiet. Yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, so we're going to talk about the Xbox Game Showcase today. That's going to be the big news, uh, news block for us. Um, so it's going to kind of work both like a Wear Gaming News and Wear Gaming Weekly because we're just going to kind of dig into all of it. Uh, but yeah. before we go into the specific parts of the announcements, um, I wanted to ask you, Josh, uh, based off of watching it all, what what was your opinion on it? Like, did you have how, what was your takeaways? Well, uh, to give my takeaway, you know, after the uh, was it May event, their mm-hmm. their gameplay reveal event, um, that was pretty much flubbed. Yeah, like it it wasn't like a terrible showing, but it didn't do exactly what they were hyping it up to be, and so. Uh, this going into it, they were trying to be more clear about this is only this is all about the games. There's not going to be hardware because we've already seen the machine. We know how powerful it is, and they're not ready to talk about release date or price yet. Right. So, so we came in expecting only to see a b- bunch of games, and that's what we saw. Yeah. Um. So, in in that perspective, they accomplished what they you know hyped up. Um. But as far as uh, going from a a, a an event that kind of missed the mark to this being like the big event. Like this was Xbox's and Microsoft's time to blow it out of the park because they absolutely have to blow it out of the park for uh, their story this November to be a lot different. Mm. Um, And I feel like they, they missed it. Okay. Um, I don't think it was a terrible show at all. I thought uh, there was a lot of great stuff, a lot of interesting stuff, but I think some of the, like the big hitters kind of missed the mark for me. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I, um, I thought it was a pretty good show. I, I can, I, uh, I agree that, this, I mean, I think this was a much better showing than their previous event. And I think yeah. they stuck to their, to their word. And they also, um, I, I think they managed expectations fairly well. Um, and I think that they learned their lessons from some of the mistakes that they made last time. I like, like thought it was more polished. Didn't feel like, you know, people were, you know, held captive in there. So like, I mean, yeah. not to make a joke out of it. I mean, we all know that people are working from home, so we get yeah. that there's changes. It, it, it didn't look like us. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like me with a blanket, um, you know, or yeah. like it, it was, it was a professional, <laughs> yeah, uh, professionally it, done uh, event. Yeah. And I like how, you know, Jeff Keighley was there at the beginning in the pre-show to present uh, present everything and they had, you know, people on and stuff. So I I thought like in terms of making it feel like one Mm. of those events during E3 or whatever, it felt like that in terms of uh, the presentational style, Uh, even more so, I would say, even than the uh, the PlayStation showcase, the future of gaming in in terms of that, the way it was presented, because interesting. uh, for me, I always felt like while I loved that showcase, um, the the one that happened in June, um, I definitely felt like it was you're breaking up. You're frozen. Movie, and I kind of like. Okay, um, sorry. Uh, you said uh, the that that one was more like what? Well, I, I mean, I might be wrong, but the way I remember it was kind of like this, like event like it it they showed the games and they showed the stuff and then it was quiet but there wasn't that like murmur 
that there is like the pre-show murmurs and stuff like that. Like PlayStation wasn't necessarily hosting um, a whole lot of like back and forth with anyone. It was just they just showed the thing and it was over. And I and in terms of this, I liked the the Jeff Keighley hosting and that, that I like that aspect of it. Now, in terms of the show itself, um, I thought that I thought they had a lot of really um, I thought it was great. They had a lot of games. Um, I thought they had um, a lot to show. I think that the games that they showed, they could have showed more of. Um, or I mean, like, I would have liked to have seen more of. Whether or not they could have shown more is clearly that right. they couldn't have. Um, um, I will say, I think, I think knowing what we know now from watching the show, it has set some expectations for what this next generation is going to be. Um, and it's hard to say whether or not it's bad or good. I think you know, Xbox clearly has this vision. And one of the most important things, the, the first thing that they announce pretty much in this whole thing is that every game you see is coming to Game Pass, which yeah. is the, which is kind of the crux of this whole presentation is like, you're getting all of this stuff. There's some of these really cool stuff and some of these things that you're not sure that you might into all going to be come to come to Game Pass. So I think that's a really awesome get. Uh, especially which we'll get there, but there's a few games in there that I'm like, I'm super happy for people who have it because like some of these are really great games that they're getting and yeah. they don't even have to pay for extra stuff. They just get it. And that's really cool. Um, there are some things. Uh, so as, as a strategy, it seems like the strategy for Xbox right now is that they are, um, they're trying to be a place where you can play anywhere. You can play all of the major games uh, and all the third party titles um, anywhere you want. And I think that's a really good strategy. What I think ultimately, this is kind of a finalizing statement. What I think the problem that they're having is if they have a problem is that I think that's all well and good. And as someone who is very supportive of the industry and wants people to try new things, I'm very for it. I think in terms of financially, other, I think consumers have a hard time um playing with new stuff that way the way that xbox wants to play with them does that make sense so like consumers like hearing there's this brand new thing that you're going to be able to buy and yes it doesn't make sense because you're actually going to have to spend more like on playstation side you're actually going to have to spend the 60 70 dollars on these games but it's a brand new thing. Whereas Xbox, you can play anywhere. You only have to pay $10, $15 a month. And you can play any of the games anywhere. And, but you don't need to buy a new console. But I think people want to buy a new console. Yeah. I think. Uh, uh, it, let's get it. Let's go and start yeah, yeah, getting yeah, into yeah. some of this. Just, and we'll, we'll get into the methodology as we go. Yeah. All right. So uh, first off, they show uh, one of the most anticipated titles for the last few years is Halo Infinite. Dragon Quest XI uh, uh, S. Uh, uh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, they did show a lot of a few games in the pre-show. Dragon Quest XI S, Exo, Exo Mecha, Watch Dogs Legion, Echo Generation, Hello Neighbor 2, um, and an ID and X, at Xbox um, series, and something called Balan oh, wow. Wonderful. Balan Wonderful. Um, Wonder World. Oh, sorry. Wonder World, uh, which is a platformer from um, Square Enix. Hmm. Um, I miss but that. But the, the, the big announcement, uh, the big opening announcement for um, the showcase was Halo Infinite's uh, gameplay per, uh, trailer. About nine minutes of gameplay footage from the campaign was shown. Uh, and Halo Infinite will come to Xbox Series X, Xbox One, and Windows this holiday. Um, I totally forgot but, that was the first thing because I'd already watched the pre-show. Like, uh, I, didn't, I didn't feel like this was the first thing they showed, you know? But, yeah, uh, for this, it, it, there was a... This was, a, you know, a smart way, I guess, to open the show. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, the the... They, they they hyped up the only thing they said for certain prior to the to the showcase was you're going to see halo infinite and you're going to see gameplay so because they already let that cat out of its bag i think that makes sense for them to show it um whether i mean not to show it but uh, i don't i think it kind of makes sense for them to show it first i think they also could have showed it last and it would have been fine um um 
but um, it, it, I mean, it, it got the ball rolling on something awesome yeah. for those for yeah. those players. Um, so um, I don't have a history with Halo. Um, I don't have much to say about how, how as a as a Halo player, but how I think this game makes me feel. I think it looks what I think Halo looks like when I think of it. Um, yeah, like when I think of Halo, it it hits those marks. Uh, and I think for people who have been playing the series, and maybe the game has been has had the game series has had a departure from where it's from. I think it's going to hit those notes. I think it's open. It looks more open world, which I think might be cool for some players. Um, but nothing about it seemed like, oh, I have to play this game. And I don't know how it felt for you. Uh, for me, I, I'm with you where I don't have a huge history of Halo. I haven't beat a single Halo game. Um, I played the first Halo a bit. Um, I, I didn't I wasn't really into the weapons. I wasn't really into the, the enemies. They all seemed kind of cheesy and goofy and and i didn't care about multiplayer so none none of the big things that halo is really spoke to me um what i can say by looking at the halo infinite is like it looks like a return to the original halo combat evolved like the color scheme is very much that version of halo like it's it looks like it's been uprezzed from like from the original yeah, and I think that's a really neat thing, especially for people who are, have been in, with the series for a long time. As yeah. far as like this being what they wanted to show off, um, something they had to show off. Um, I think, you know, one that the I thought the acting was terrible. Um, uh, to start off with, um, it looked like a very sc- standard sc- scripted. Uh, event that happened at the beginning of the trailer and i don't think it it had some like beautiful vistas but as soon as you like looked closer at anything that was going on it looked bad Mm -hmm. Uh, um and that was a that's a very weak foot to step start off on if you're trying to sell a 500 hundred dollar console yeah you you have a uh, i think uh, is the argument to be made but um but so um, when you have, you know, um, it, it, even if you'd start off with Sinua, Sin- which you couldn't have because they didn't show anything more. We'll get to that in a little bit. But like that one visually, it was more striking than this. Yeah. Um, I'll, a lot of the other games they showed the, uh, during the event looked a lot better. And mm-hmm. even even afterwards, they came out and uh, there was an interview or a, a rumor saying that this was an early build of the game. Um, this is not the build I would have shown. Uh, sure. uh, maybe this is a build you would have leaked a few months ago or something. Yeah. But as far as w- w- I, I'm, I'm just shocked that this is what they started off with. Cause it didn't look good. I don't I mean, think. I don't think it, did, I mean, it didn't look great. Uh, like, and I know I've seen the screenshots of like, Oh, the, the way this thing looks and like, yeah, but it's also like, it's a style choice and like halo, has become like in the images of Halo that I feel like I've seen, like it's gotten more realistic looking. But I don't know if that, that there's necessarily anything wrong with them make giving it a more like, especially because a lot of it looks exactly like it did back uh, on the original Xbox. I think they're going with a style, and I think you know if if this is a style they want to go go, it doesn't have to look super realistic. I think it needs to look better than it does, and I think it will. Um, uh-huh. Um, I, do, I definitely I mean, I agree with you on a certain extent that like if there's if, if it looked better now. In house, than it does what they've shown, I really hope I really hope so. But um, it, it just conflicts with the messaging of the, the overall Microsoft messaging is we're putting out the most powerful console on the market, but we're going to give you a game that can be played and looks no better than what you're playing right now. And it looks actually far inferior than stuff you're playing on our competitors consoles and even on our consoles. Um, Yeah, I think. And also the villains looked like they came out of gears of war and was, uh, and and he talked like uh, uh, the villain from uh, destiny Two, the red war. um, uh, Thrall, 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 gall, gall, 
Yeah. <laughs> Gary no, he Gall. Did, he, did, he did talk like Gall. I was like, it's just Gall, and he's he's just not very – and they zoomed in on his face, which also didn't look very good. And it was just a, a bunch of bizarre choices they made. Mm. And – hyping up this console, the most powerful console. Everything's going to look great except for our games because we're not going to focus on making things look great. I don't I feel like that's an overgeneralization though. Like I mean like but that they, is but, the takeaway. That, that, that's but, that's this is the game they wanted to show very front on their thing. That this is the foot they wanted to step on after saying this is the most powerful hardware. Here's what you're going to play on it. Yeah. And I mean, I, I still think that though it, it's a difference of like what gr- graphically what the game is trying to achieve because it's I mean it's not looking like modern warfare, it's not looking like um like anything gritty. And I've seen some comparisons of like oh this is what the guy's face looks like in The Last of Us, and this is what the guy's face looks like in Infinite. I'm like that's that's a that's not an equitable a comparison because mm-hmm. because The Last of Us is a linear game where it's optimized to show you small details where Halo Infinite is going to be an open world game with a lot less focus on those specific things. Now, in the cutscenes, maybe his face should have looked a little better. Um, but like, I don't know. I think people are looking for reasons to be hard on this. And I mean, I, I think there's definitely reasons to be. Uh, but... I don't think it's going to be as bad as people think it is. I think when Halo Infinite comes out, people are going to love it, and they're not going to care about how they felt when it was presented. And that's probably true. I, I'm I'm more looking at it as I am someone who would be on the fence about buying a Microsoft console, right? But mm-hmm. what, give me a reason to buy the Series X. And based on the presentation we got, I have no like I have no reason to. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, again, and, and give me a reason to get into Halo. And, you know, you show me this is a, a new direction for Halo. And it doesn't feel like a new direction. It doesn't feel like a departure. It feels like like, like it's more Halo. And that might be fine for some people. And it might, it might be great for Microsoft. That's for all I know, because yeah. I'm not a Halo guy. But just look at, as a, an observer of what Microsoft is trying to do um, and putting this game forward and again the the presentation they made they didn't make compelling arguments sure sure um i don't know i might play around with it like if if it comes out and i have the ability to play it like i would definitely test it out but uh let's talk about sated k3 which was the next announcement that was Um, a surprise uh i mean i was actually kind of surprised because i thought the last one didn't do too well um but i think that um i mean this trailer looked really interesting, uh, but I mean, I don't think it's going to hold a candle to um, like any of the other post-apocalyptic games we like, um, especially if it's done the same way as those older games. Um, yeah, I think I mean, I've never played it again. We're not Xbox people, so most of this stuff we haven't played. I was just putting that out there. But uh, State of Decay has been a very interesting game to see from the sidelines, uh, but it seemed like two was pretty much the same game as one and Microsoft bought them in the middle of production and kind of yeah. probably, probably spin that out too fast from my understanding. And so I'm hoping state of decay three, which it's not really been that long since state of decay two, but I'm hoping that they've been able to put more thought yeah. and process into what this is going to be. And seeing a zombie deer eating something was kind of disturbing. So yes, it was very disturbing. Um, uh, they also announced uh, Forza Motorsport, uh, which is an early development for Xbox Series X and Windows 10. The game will run at 4K 60 frames per second, but again, just like with State of Decay 3, no release date was given. Um, uh, more Forza. Um, I think it's interesting that Forza is not an announcement game. Or then, uh, sorry, uh, a launch. not a release launch game. Yeah. Um, and um, I mean, maybe it's too typical to think that a, you know, racing games would be a launch title. Um, actually, I don't even know if Gran Turismo 7 is a launch title I don't for know. PS5, um, or at least launch window. Um, but this is a recurring theme, though, that I do have a problem with with this conference, is um, no release date was given. 
no release date was given. Yeah. No release date was given. Uh, granted, I'm not I'm not concerned about the holiday 2020 ones because we know we're going to give them this window. But I'm talking about this one uh, and the future ones that are making it problematic. So Forza Motorsport. We're also coming up on a theme. We have like Halo Infinite and Forza Motorsport. And I'll, I'll pick up on this theme again later. Uh, the next game they announced was called Everwild. Uh, which received a new trailer. People, when I, when I was watching the streams, but apparently this is not a new game. Oh, uh, really? new announcement. Um, and it received a new trailer that showcased some gorgeous visuals. It's still a development, so no release date was given, but the this game will be coming to Xbox. Uh, this is the rare developed game, correct? Yeah, that's yeah. correct. I, I thought it looked, this is the one that I, had, that I was talking about. There's a rhythm to the universe or something, and only certain species can understand it or really feel it. Yeah. Or, I I am very interested to see what this game is going to be because it, oh one hundred percent this looks really cool I love the art style see this is kind of like like Ori in the Blind Forest and stuff like that this is a kind of art style direction that I can get behind <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, using bad uh, textures is not <laughs> yeah no and and so like that's a good point and to counter what I was saying is that like this has an art style this has a look to it and it, it looks very deliberate and done well. Which is a p- good point. Whereas right. with Halo, it might be an art style, but it's not looking great the way it is. It just looks kind of muddy, and I think that's yeah. a fair argument. Um, but picking an early PS3 generation, Xbox generation uh, art style for a, your brand new console may not be a great direction. <laughs> yeah, and I, I I really hope again because I, I I want Microsoft to prove me wrong. I really hope they come out and say sorry that was. You know that that wasn't the right build. The build that we wanted to show wasn't ready. We had to pull an old old build. Here's what it actually looks like today, and it blows us away. I would love them to do that, but again, they I, they haven't shown that that's what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, after Everwild, they announced Don't Nod's new game called Tell Me Why. Um, Tell Me Why's first chap- chapter will be available on Xbox One on August 27th. The new trailer highlights some of the game's story beats and gives us an update. Uh, gives us an idea of what to expect. Uh, it'll also be playable on Xbox Game Pass. Um, uh, I'm, I'm but, into it. It's so yeah. odd. It felt like Life is Strange. I'm like, give me more. The lip syncing was terrible. Well, but just makes sense. But again, I, we were watching it through a stream of somebody else watching it through a stream, so I don't know how bad the lip syncing was, but it was bad. Yeah. Don't care because uh, it's don't not, yeah. and I'm interested to and see actually, what they like, decide. The graphical style is looking stronger than the previous Life is Strange game. Though, granted, I didn't play yeah. Life is Strange 2 yet, but um, it's looking like they're finally like bringing it in a little bit. Because before, it was, while it was definitely stylized, there was definitely like, ooh. Um, whereas this, I mean, granted, the little bit that we've seen, um, I think will be super interesting. I, and, I often think about Life is Strange. Like, that oh. game was so good. Yeah. Like I just just randomly, I was just thinking about man, that was such a that was a that was a great experience. Yeah, so, I have a playlist on my iPhone that's about life. Is like the Life is Strange playlist, and I listen to it sometimes. There's a couple songs on there. I'm like, eh, I'm not so good yeah. in, into it here, but maybe in the game, I was more into it. Yeah. But there, I mean, it's, it, then some of the songs are just bangers. So yeah. Um, Xbox Series X version of Ori and the Will of the Wisps is currently in the works. The game will be playable at 120 frames per second thanks to Xbox Series X hardware. And then optimize, uh, the optimized Series X version will be will launch later this year. Yeah, uh, I heard the, uh, that originally launched with some uh, technical problems. On the, even on the Xbox One X was having problems running this game. So, Which kind of, I mean, not to say that's not a strong game, but it definitely surprises me. Yeah. Um, but uh, because I'm, play, I'm currently exactly. playing the first one on um, the Blind Forest Switch. on Switch, um, and it seems to be doing fine. Enough. But this is a much more technical beast, I would say, um, which is cool. Again, news that it's really cool that it's going to be there. Um, it's not I quite. Don't, I don't know if this was an announcement that needed to be made here. No. That's but, a blog okay. post sort of thing. Yeah, especially like this one. Same and thing the with one. the next one. Um, well, I don't know. I kind of was interested in the next one. And one after that. So uh, Outer Worlds uh, DLC, Peril on Gorgon. 
A uh, new DLC for the Outer Worlds is on the way. Peril on Gorgon releases September 9th and will cost $15. Um, and I mean, I didn't play Outer Worlds, so can't speak into it, but it's cool that they're, you know, but this is kind of an obsidian section right here because um, they also announced Grounded, which is a co op survival game, um, which was re- received a new gameplay trailer ahead of its launch into the Xbox game preview yeah. on next week on July 28th. So I'm guessing next week there's going to be more on this game. I thought it was kind of neat because it was like for me, it, it spoke Bugs Life to me. It's like playing Bugs Life, except they're mini human. Honey, I shrunk the kids. I was going to say, I went to Honey, I, I shrunk the kids. Uh, yeah, that, goes, that shows the age difference. But uh, apparently, I mean, this isn't a new announcement either. Uh, this has been talked about before, so but I, I haven't seen anything on it. Yeah, thought it, I thought it did look interesting. Couldn't tell. Was it? Is it like a co-op? Yeah, it's a co-op survival game. Yeah, co-op survival. Well, so this is uh, so the first time I started watching the the showcase. This is the game that when I turned on the TV, when I turned it on, this is the game it was on. And I was like, what is like? Am I even watching the same showcase? So it was definitely weird to get into. Um, and I'm not even saying it's a game I might want to play, but there's something about it that's kooky and interesting. I might get it yeah um next it is which worth is probably- uh ju- just saying uh just to add it is worth watching these trailers on a on a good pc uh on youtube and not just like in the live stream because uh looking at a few of these playing um going down the list here they look a lot better than they did in the stream yeah so um just putting that out there yeah uh, the next game, which is the final game in this Obsidian trio, was Avowed, which is a first-person fantasy, R- fantasy RPG from Obsidian. Um, again, no release date was given, but the game has been confirmed for Xbox Series X and Windows 10. I'd say out of the three games, this is the most interesting-looking one. Um, uh, Obsidian has made Pillars of Eternity, uh, yeah. which is a game I've been intrigued in, but not a game that I've ever sat down to play. I think I've played a little bit of it, but it's the... Hmm. isometric weird rpg style i could see myself getting into this if it is somehow more interesting than skyrim which is what it's trying to be a, a, like a deeper rpg of skyrim yeah uh I, i'd have to see more i mean i thought it looked good looked interesting i don't think there was enough given for me to uh, I, thought the name, I, I think the name is great avowed is a great name yeah, yeah, no, I think it has a great, um, I think it has a lot of potential just based on the history of the company. And I think that's why I'm mostly excited about it, knowing Obsidian was original Fallout creators. Um, yeah. When they made Fallout New Vegas, and I believe they made South Park, South Park Stickers. Stickers. Yeah. Um, So, like, th- there's there's a lot of good stuff going behind this game. Oh, yeah. In terms and it's of, actually not so surprising for them to announce a new game here because the other two announcements aren't well. Grounded is a new game, but it's not a new t- announcement, and, yeah. and DLC not super exciting. But when compared to when added to all three, it's a pretty decent announcement. So well, I also while, just think it's impressive that they're making three games, or they have three different kinds of games in the works right now. Right, right. Uh, next up, you have as dusk falls. Which, uh, which to me also seemed like a don't nod, Life is Strange kind of game, um, but it's made by a new studio, Interior Night, which is a really interesting studio name. Yeah, I like that name a lot. Um, and um, it's from the from former uh, Quantic Dream d- uh, developer, mm-hmm. and they're they're responsible for uh, Origami. Um, heavy rain heavy rain and beyond two souls and detroit become human Uh, yeah again no release date but yeah um i thought the art style for this was super interesting it definitely has speak some life is strange to it um it's almost more more like interactive novel sort of yeah um and that's what's giving me a little pause because i'm not like i'm a fan of life is strange which is walking sim you know you're on investigating this thing but this is a little too 2d for me i think um sure we'll see well i mean it could be great and i think the story that they're going to be telling is interesting it's just a matter of um how it's executed i think i think it was interesting um, that there, there it was uh well the presenter was seemed french opening up an english studio 
developing a game ba- based in the American Southwest. <laughs> yeah, there's I a lot like, of. Oh, uh, okay, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we will see. Um, um, I and think this next one. Go. Oh, I'm sorry, you finished. I was gonna say I think this the the probably the most surprising disappointment here. Yeah, I was gonna say this is good. this one will speak to your disappointment. Which is literally what I was about to say. Um, was uh, Ninja Theory um, gave us a brief update on Hel- uh, Sinewan's saga Hellblade 2. Um, there is no gameplay footage shown, and the developer diaries um, reveals that the game is set in Iceland, which m- was presented after the show. Um, yeah, yeah, so thought- you go into that one. Let me know what, yeah. what you're feeling on all that. It, it was so bizarre. If you have nothing to say, don't say anything. Like, yeah. we, we already knew Sinewan's saga was coming. The what they showed us, we'd already seen, and it was only like it was only like a CG trailer of the main character, and this is seemingly a long way off. If you're talking yeah. about the game's setting in Ireland and talking about their trips Iceland. to Ireland, or is that Iceland? Now, I again, I think it's incredible. I think they look incredible, uh, and it's not my kind of game because it's very uh, creepy, you know. Yeah, but and, and, and I'm all for it, but um. I, it's just why say anything at all like this is something that you, you, you should have backed off of or yeah produce some kind of like show, show like a, you got to have a some kind of snippet of gameplay or yeah something see they announced this game at x at the the game um game awards right they, right. they announced this with the reveal of the series x which it was only about nine months ago um so I, I mean, I'm kind of with you where it's like, we don't need an update every time. This was the problem that we got it with uh, the other games, like with Sony, which was like, we had like the fifth update on um, Death Stranding. And we're like, okay. Right. That's exactly why what they, we... they didn't do the uh, E3 last year is because, well, we don't want to keep giving the same updates over and over. You know, these games are coming. Let's yeah. get, uh, give way to think new announcements. Yeah. And so while I feel like it would have been strange if they weren't there, but if there was even like a post show blog post being like, there's nothing more to add in this time, but Hey, go to their website and they'll show you some cool developer stuff. That would have been fine. But to be like, Hey, so we're going to, we're, we're going to tell you that our game is set in Iceland and you got to go look at the stuff later or cut this and put it in the pre-show. Yeah. Swap this out with, I don't know anything else. I don't know. It just this felt like a a, a swing and a miss for me. Um, yeah, I agree with that for sure. Um, next up was uh, Double Fine, uh, which was a Jack Black trailer. Yeah, uh, that was fun. I, I thought it was fun. Um, I don't have any affinity for Psychonauts, whatever. Yeah. But I like I like Tim Schafer, even though I don't play a lot of his games. I, I do love Broken Age. I think Broken Age was incredible. Mm. Um, I never played that. I only played uh, Grim Fandango. Yeah, well, yeah, I played Grim, Grim Fandango and I played um, uh, Brutal Legend. Brutal Legend, and I, I, I've like dabbled in some of the other stuff, but um, Broken Age is incredible for me. Uh, Psychonauts, I mean, it's got that same, uh, you know, kooky Tim Schafer art style, like not so creepy uh, Tim Burton stuff, you know? Yeah, I was gonna say it has Tim Burton vibes. Um. Um, that's for sure and it's got a 2021 release which is apparently a pushback from when they were supposed to come out yeah i think jack black's like the one of the characters in the game is like the mode of light or whatever that yeah probably uh, some kind of guiding light or something for him whatever it's yeah. jack black it, it, and tim shaver they're buds and he's going to be in every game yeah. he was in broken age so <laughs> oh was he yeah oh well um not related but i've been watching this show called, called community which I have this whole thing trying to get into it, but he was just in an episode in the first season um, where like the community is centered around like this group of seven people. And then at the beginning of like the, you know, you know how on TV shows they have a break between during the winter. It's like, yeah, there's like the first half of season one and second half of season one. Yeah. Like the the second half of season one premiere. uh, He's there. He froze. You froze. Actually, you there? You're moving. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, he pretends like he's been part of the show the entire time uh, <laughs> at the beginning of the second season. And he's like, come on, man, it's me. And then uh, it turns out that he got kicked out of the other friend group that he was with. And Owen Wilson was a part of that group. Um, and so um, he he is testing out this other group so he can be a part of that. But then Owen Wilson's group decides, you know, you're actually cool enough to be in our group. So he brings it back. I, that was just a story. But, but he was it was hilarious. Was like he's he's just hilarious and everything. Yeah. Um, so it almost brings me out of anything he's in anymore kind of brings me out of it a little bit because it's just, it's just Jack Black. Black. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and I'm I, curious to hear about you on this next one. So um, I think for me, this was the biggest announcement. Now this is, <laughs> this is my bias, you know, showing, but this was the biggest Xbox announcement. Um, and that's destiny two is coming to Xbox game pass with all of its expansions in September. This might make me an Xbox Destiny player. Yeah. But actually, no, I'll probably be a PC Destiny player because I can get Xbox Game Pass on PC. Well, yeah, but that, I mean, that's, that's again, but going back through all of it. Not, not, not having to buy the expansions. Like, you know, that's, Destiny has been a primarily a PlayStation leaning uh, franchise, part, due, due in part to the Activision. Uh, deals that they made back in the day and so with bungie being independent now they can do whatever they want this is huge yeah because destiny is not a smaller game and having this free on game pass all the expansions um this is also a, a slap towards stadia which 100 percent like th their only you know thing going for them was having destiny 2 available anywhere uh, you can play yeah. Stadia on your uh, on your browser or on your phone or whatever, or you can play Destiny. Wait, and the, the part of this announcement was you'll be able to play this through XCloud on your phone wherever you want. And yeah. uh, Stadia, good night. Let me chisel your grave for you. Stadia in the water now. Yeah. So um, this was huge. Um, no, yeah. I mean, and also like. I guess I've never watched the Beyond Light trailer before because there's some really cool stuff going on. Oh, there. they're doing some Wait. really interesting like, things in Destiny. There's this ice shelf thing that you can like throw like and like platforming and all this stuff. I was like, oh wow. Yeah. Um, well, there's a, there's there's going to be a new dark subclass. Yeah. This yeah. darkness subclass. And so yeah, lots of cool stuff coming in Destiny. I got to get back into it, but there's so much right. going on. Yeah. No. Um. So yeah. No, I I agree with you that this is probably like. Like again, PC being maybe a PC player and having this like honestly, you know, well we'll get to that. Uh, no, but I I agree that this is probably their biggest get and definitely is like Stadia is dead in the water now. Um, yeah, I mean unless they do something miraculous, I which I, doubt. I I don't even know how. Yeah, actually I think I'm still subscribed to them. I need to cancel that. But <laughs> um. Uh, Stalker 2 was announced. I thought the trailer was interesting, but again, it's another survival ho horror game that has no release yeah. date. Uh, same. Uh, looked interesting. Horror game. Not going to play it. Whatever. Um, same with the next yeah. one. Warhammer 40,000 Dark, Dark Tide is a four-player co-op game that's coming to Xbox Series X in 2021. It'll also be available on Game Pass. Um, the only thing... This piqued my interest a little bit because I thought... See, I thought it was going to be the um, Back for Blood um, Left for Dead guys. So that was going to be the Left for Dead guys doing Back for Blood because uh, uh, that was the yeah. big rumor. And I'm like, that would I mean, while I still wouldn't have had any relationship with it, I was like, oh, that would have been really cool to see and see people get hyped up for that. Right, um, right. This, I mean, I play Warhammer Vermintide occasionally. Oh, right. Um, and, but this is just, this is just the same. It's just going to be with zombies so i mean it's, it's still filling that void i guess for for people who want left for dead but i mean back for blood's coming up anyway so yeah um, uh, the next one it was kind of interesting yeah uh, I liked tetris it. effect I connected uh so it was almost like tetris attack a version of tetris effect yeah uh coming uh holiday 2020 so m most likely on uh, launch day it'll be available um, and this is a this is a spe specific version that's going to be exclusive to xbox 
So, yeah, I do think it's cool. Although I did hear also that people who own a copy of Tetris Effect for PlayStation will get a multiplayer update. So essentially, they're going to be the same. Games. Oh, okay. It's just won't be called um, connected. I think, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah, I might be wrong about that, but I'll I'll check. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't have, I don't care one way or the other. I think Tetris Effect is great. The I, I, I like to almost like a remixed version of con, uh, the connected. Uh, yeah. Song. Uh, Which I have again downloaded and I've listened to. Yeah. Um, Which one do you like better? Do you like the in-game one better, or do you like the? Uh, in game one's better. I, That's I also agree. the one I heard first. Well, I think she sings too much in the other version. Yeah. Like there's all like she, there's okay, no so this is this is an article from Eurogamer. I'll just say real quick. Um Tetris Effect is getting multiplayer in time for Christmas twenty twenty on Xbox. Um this says it's a timed Xbox exclusive. It says Tetris Effect Connected is considered a Tetris Effect 2.0 and launches for Xbox Series X, Windows 10, and Game Pass later this year. It includes smart delivery, blah, blah, blah. The game includes Tetsuya Miguchi's wonderful original single-player Tetris Effect with new co-op and competitive online. Um, the multiplayer then launches on non-Xbox platforms in summer 2021 as a free update to all other existing versions of Tetris Effect, which are okay. on PlayStation 4, Epic Game Store, and on Oculus Quest. But there is no mention of a PS5 version of this game. So oh. if you have the game on PS4, there will be a like I said, be a free update, a multiplayer update uh, in twenty twenty. Right. So and it'll be playable on PS5 because it's backwards compatible. But. Right. So anyway. Um Let's talk about I wonder the if you could do the the uh 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 the you know um competitive or co-op versions in VR. In VR. That would be cool. Um, maybe I don't know. That might be a little too much, but it might be. I wasn't a big fan of it in VR because uh, I think that it, it I was I had a hard time focusing on a lot of the stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was good. I, I like the music. I like the style. Yeah. The the weirdest uh uh the this is the strangest uh name of the night. Um, yeah. With the gunk, which just sounds yeah. awful. Is a third-person yeah. adventure game set in an exotic world filled with puzzles and enemies. It was a weird, kooky. Um, this feels like a game thing. that should that was released in in the PS3, Xbox 360 era. Um, like nothing again about this game really seemed appeals to me. Like the name is weird, I guess, but that's it. Um, but it reminds me of those worlds from like. I don't know, like um, I don't, I don't, I can't think of names of games that it makes me think of, but it makes me think of like those. Looks like it was made in dreams. Sure, yeah, um, it kind of looks like those B tier um, uh, platformers. It's not, it's not, you know, it's like Tomba or <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like instead of being Crash, it's Croc or um, or even Banjo Kazooie, which I guess is more A, a tier. I don't know. It just has the I mean, weird. I'm, I'm watching the trailer. It, it does look pretty, uh, uh, but it's it. Yeah, it's like you're vacuuming up these this this goo, this gunk. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a game made by parents to get kids to play uh, to clean. I I remember that game it's called uh, Super Mario Sunshine. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about this next one? So the medium, I thought this game was super cool. It's probably the coolest game I'll never play. Um, because um, I think I think this is a game that is meant to show off next gen. Um, yeah, that uh, game. So the medium is uh, um. By Bluebird. Gameplay footage for the medium was shown for the first time. The trailer gives us a brief look at the game's two worlds rendered simultaneously. The medium is coming to Xbox Series X and Windows 10 Holiday 2020. It's definitely a horror game. There, she's like going through this hospital or hotel, old hotel, and like she's experiencing two realities at the same time. You switch between, and there's games like that, like 2D indie games, like Inside, I think, or um, 
stuff like that where you switch between realities and that's super cool yeah dishonored did um, that as well uh dishonored did that and did dishonored do that uh and actually titanfall 2 did a kind of did that uh in one mission yeah um but i mean like to have the entire game rendered to to have completely different looking environments yeah. I think is super cool. Um, I will not play this game because it looks too scary. Um, I'll nope out of yeah, it. But um, I'm watching. It, it kind of has a, a little bit of a um, control vibe to it, except control isn't nearly as intense as this. Um, control is pretty intense, but I don't think it's this bad. Um, I don't know. Do you feel similar? Yeah, I, I'm in the same boat. I wish I was not as big a chicken as I am, but I am. Um, but yeah, it's definitely got control vibes, <laughs> some creepy things, um, uh, but really, really cool, um, idea, I think. Yeah. Um, then, uh, they announced, uh, fantasy, fantasy star online Two, new Genesis is coming to Xbox one, Xbox series X in 2021, which is, I guess is the first sequel to fantasy star online. No, it, it, I mean, it, the Fantasy Star Online two happened a long time ago. This is a, like a re, this is like a HD version or a remastered version of Fantasy Star Online two. Oh, uh, I think. Okay, I could be wrong, but uh, I've heard about like there there was a second version. So I think this this is just that version redone. Gotcha. I mean, nothing about it really spoke to me. I think it's cool that it's there. Yep. It's a thing. It's a thing. Uh, next is a basketball game uh, made in the nineties. It's a Crossfire. Yeah, there was a, there was this uh, board game that had little silver like uh, bearings, and you could shoot them. You had to shoot them into basketball goals. Um, oh, plastic basketball goals. So it was called Crossfire. Um, but no, that's not what this game is. This is a wow, oh, gotcha. First person shooter. Looked um, like a first honestly, I thought it looked pretty good. It's also developed the the campaign is developed by Remedy, um, which again yeah. is control. Um, say the yeah. game itself is not new. I mean, it's been a multiplayer game, um, but very popular in the Asian territories. Uh, yeah, but uh, really, the trailer was without the uh, the story. Yeah, being made by Remedy. I thought the trailer looked. Good. I mean, it looked like an action movie trailer, which I mean, yeah, that's what it is. Um, and then uh, they give us an update on um, Sea of Thieves, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, and Gears Tactics, which are all receiving next gen glow ups. Um, they'll all be optimized for Xbox Series X and time for a holiday 2020. Um, and then it cuts away, and it and I can't remember the guy's name. Um, um, the guy talks for a minute. And then they announce uh, one final game, uh, which is Fable. Uh, they finally have officially announced that Microsoft is making Fable uh, by Playground Games. And it is will be coming to Xbox Series X and Windows 10. And uh, just like half the other games on this list do not have a release date. Um, yeah. Uh, I, this is another one where like, okay, you didn't have anything to show. We knew... Uh, Playground was working on Fable. How do you not have more to show than this? Playground is known for doing the F Forza Horizon series, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and Fable is a game that has been dormant for almost 20 years, 15 years. Yeah. Like you couldn't have like either had something to show or waited. Yeah. Like, I, well, so this is kind of like. And not necessarily defending it. Um, this is kind of like um, like the Elder uh, Scrolls. Yeah, announcing Elder Scrolls Six, which I don't know if that was a good decision. Um, it wasn't. But see, the thing about this though is that we didn't know. I mean, we knew, but we didn't know that Playground was making it. I remember. I remember that uh, rumor starting like back when I was still delivering packages for Amazon, like early. Um, yeah. And I remember because I just remember listening to the podcast and I'll playground, but I thought Lions was making no, no, no. 
Um, and then, um, so is it cool that we know that the game finally exists? Yeah. Uh, I think it was kind of a neat one more thing. Sure. I almost like, I probably would have flipped. I probably would have opened with Fable uh, because I'd have been like, oh, cool, brand new thing. And then because there's not much to show, it would have just moved on. Yeah. Um, it would have moved on. And then we would talk about other stuff. And then end on a 10 minute playthrough of that uh, Halo. Halo stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, Fable is a game that I never got a chance to play that I've always heard was really fun. Um, so I'm excited for the opportunity to eventually play a future Fable game. Um, if it's done good, I mean, if it's an interesting game. But um, I, but based on, I mean, based on that alone, I'm not like, oh, it looked, like I've seen a lot of people like, oh, Fable looked awesome. Like the 10 second trailer looked good. I mean, visually, yeah, it was good, but it was just a trailer. It was just a, a few shots yeah. of stuff. I mean, I played uh, the original Fable. I, again, I didn't beat it. I don't know if I beat any game on Xbox, but um, it was, it was a silly tongue in cheek, um, a little uh, vulgar game as you play as a kid who's learning to be like a wizard or whatever uh you go around the town kicking the chickens and p- making people mad and mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot more to it obviously there's three uh what three games two and a half games something like that yeah um, no, I think and I'm, I'm definitely interested to see what they'll do with it uh moving forward i just wish like the story of this whole conference was i wish i would have seen more yeah uh and i think you know Going back to how I was starting this show um, is kind of where we're getting back to. Um, the, you know, I, I, I think there's a lot of interesting games to be shown. Um, I think there's reasons to be excited to play future Xbox games. But I think the point that you made that now that we've talked through the games, um, I think I'm seeing more of your point, which is like, but is there a reason to buy this now or this fall? There might be a huge reason to to be to jump into the Game Pass. There, is, yeah. I mean, there's no reason not to get a Game Pass if you have a, a, a halfway decent PC that can play games and uh, and a phone because you're going to be able to get X Cloud with Game Pass Ultimate. Like, yeah. uh, but I don't see any reason to have an Xbox. I mean, you know, for the last few years we've been hearing about xbox buying up all these uh studios uh basically this this entire generation there's been practically no first party output other than forza Mm -hmm. and gears right like and it and we kept saying well it's you know they're they're really going to come out and and knock this out of the park they got all these new studios to show something they're working on they have this the initiative this this quadruple a studio that is is working on something amazing right and Mm -hmm. so they're going to come out and once they show uh what's coming for uh series x like this this is the time they're they're waiting Mm -hmm. for that announcement and the announcement has come and they didn't do any of the stuff that we were expecting them to do they showed Mm -hmm. they showed dlcs they showed updates to games we already knew about then they didn't show they showed practically nothing new except for halo like Sanu, nothing new. We saw literally the same footage, and and a guy standing, you know, saying, "Hey, come to the website." Like we saw a CG ten second trailer for Fable. We saw a logo for Forza Motorsport. We saw, like, n- I mean, we saw some games. We saw Destiny Two, like, <laughs> but. We mm-hmm. saw Everwild, which again, not a new game. It was a game that we apparently we knew about. Grounded, a game we already knew about. Like this was the time to be hyping up and putting out. I know I get it. Like games take a long time to make, and um, you know, not all your studios are, especially ones that you just bought, are going to have things ready to go. But like, yeah, you're you're pushing this five hundred dollar console. We, which we don't know if it's a five hundred dollar console. We we're exp- we're you know, assuming it'll be about five hundred dollars, mm-hmm. um, and you 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 want to give people a reason to c- come to the Xbox ecosystem, and 
or the Xbox system, and they didn't do that. Uh, this was really for them. And, and if they didn't want to try to sell a console, then don't sell a console. Sell a product. Sell yeah. sell Game Pass. And um, I just feel like if you're an Xbox person, like there's no way they sold you on this, like like place like Sony did for PlayStation fans. Yeah. Like, no, I, I again. No, I don't think I, have to... I don't think what they showed was bad. Other than I think Halo was a bad look at the game. Mm-hmm. I think it could be beautiful. There was like the Vista, was, like I said, like just a glance at it, and it was like it was really pretty. But the textures were bad. the mm-hmm. The lighting was weird. the The pilot looked awful. the 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 voice acting was not good. Like at least in context, it didn't do anything. Um, this this threat of the banished who i i can't i can't even he talked for more than half the trailer and i couldn't be even bothered to care about him and it, it it didn't pull me in at all uh and so um for people who aren't into the halo series you're not going to you're not going to get me to play halo because i did i haven't care, cared about halo for five games and what you show me here shows me, I, well, I don't know who the banished are or why I should care about them. And looks like the same enemies we you fought in the first one. So I don't know why, why I should care at all. Yeah. And it, it just did nothing to move the needle for me. What do you think about the idea that maybe they, um, like it seems, it seems, I mean, sorry, I'm answering my own question in my head as I'm asking you. Um, what does it seem to you then that they're trying to do? Because for me, I agree with most of what you said. Like, it seems like there's not really a huge reason to be, um, to buy the console this year to, to upgrade. And if you can only, if you only have the, the money to buy one, if you're interested in buying one at all, then it may not seem like this is going to be the one to buy, at least not right now. Um, because of all that stuff. Um, what do you think is their is what their thought process is? You know, I, I did want to mention that, you know, I am a little disappointed we didn't see stuff from the initiative or other companies like that. But they said that this isn't going to be the only conference that they're having. Um, and a lot of these studios did in the last five within the last five years get acquired. And if you think about like the output of how good Sony's first party games like half of these games have been made for seven plus years. Like Ghost of Tsushima has been being worked on since 2014 when um, Second Son came out. Same yeah. thing with Last well, of Us Part well, Two. Well, no, there's there's a game before Ghost of Tsushima they were working on. Oh, well, they okay. were working on. Uh, so I mean, th- this game's probably been is probably what four years in development. Ghosts. Uh, Ghost. Ghost. Maybe they, yeah. there was a there was a leaked footage of a game from 2015, I think that uh got scrapped gotcha um but, but, but the principle still stands it's like and then, and then insomniac time. wasn't wasn't a, a sony studio they had a game they had multiple games in pipeline that are now sony games uh oh, spider-man yeah. and ratchet and clank and they were um they've spun up games in the matter of four or five years um and i mean obsidian is putting out avowed um grounded was probably a game they were working on pr- prior to being acquired mm-hmm. um uh ninja theory put out a weird uh hero shooter um mm-hmm. and now they're putting out well not now at some point they're putting out Sanua, but haven't sh- haven't shown anything mm-hmm. from Sanua like and they bought like 14 studios and we can't get like a, f- yeah. a few of them to show more than a couple seconds of gameplay, except for infinite that we saw 10 minutes of gameplay that was uninspired. Like it looked like mm-hmm. half the other open semi open world games, but not as good, not as well acted, not as polished. Like, you you got you've got to start coming out and knocking this out of the park, or you're going to be my ten dollar subscription instead of yeah. A, 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 yeah I, I, I think that they don't really have a problem with that. 
Um, and I mean, because I mean, if they didn't really have a problem with it, then they do it. I, I just don't know if that's exciting. Like, well, and that, that's that. I think that comes down to what the problem is, which is, I think, I think that what they're going for, like, you know, someone said it similarly, which is like, you know, uh, we've been waiting and waiting for them to to drop. Oh, they're going to be dropping it now. They're going to drop it all. And this was the time to do it. And since they didn't do it at like we think, I don't know if they will. Um, it yeah. really seems like they're they're looking to be the 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 platform to be a service for. And if that's the case, that's fine. Um, it's not what people want out of them. And I think that I think that comes down to the point, which is it's really cool that they have all this stuff to offer. But even though they only had to pay 10, 10, 15 bucks a month to get all these games, it's not as satisfying as being like, I have a brand new thing. And I think people want a brand new thing, even if it doesn't make sense as much as by paying 15 bucks a month. Um, and I'm the same way. It's like, well, yeah, this is all fun and I can play it on any console I want whenever it comes out. But ultimately, like, I want a PS5 game. I want next gen. Um, yeah. So, and I think they're, they've kind of been painting themselves into a corner. It's like, well, maybe Halo, I think Halo may not look as good as it could because it is their flagship title that they want you to play on any of the consoles, like S, X, and Series X. Um, oh, Phil Spencer came out and said that the old hardware isn't holding them back because it's all x86 hard, uh, 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 you know, hardware off based mm -hmm. off, you know, uh, x86 architecture um so it's just like scaling games on a pc now so mm. okay that well you took away an excuse then like why doesn't this look like a next-gen title why does this look like early ps or your early xbox one stuff mm -hmm. or or less than yeah like it, it, it's just it just it surprises me that it came out and with such a weak showing yeah um, and i think another problem was is like you know when you when you look at other conferences and not even uh, like like playstations but like ubisoft's from earlier or um no yeah ubisoft's it's like uh while they didn't have a ton of new stuff to show they like showed a lot of what they had um and uh like with the watchdogs and um assassin's creed um, I think Watch Dogs is in trouble. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, 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 I'm not interested in either of those games. Um, but, um, but um, what I, what I think is is just like, you know, where was that like moment where you're dropped in and there was no, uh, like, oh, this is that like, like I mean, the Kratos moment when it's like, yeah. oh, this I, is. God I of think War. that should have been the. I think that should have been Fable. Fable should have been like. The, oh and here's one more thing and here's five minutes of gameplay from fable and it's just incredible yeah. and i i mean clearly it wasn't ready so they couldn't have done that but at some point you got to be ready and we, we've given microsoft a whole generation to get ready and they're yeah. not and uh which which says to me that phil spencer is great for getting these services up and get running um I mean, Game Pass is one of the best deals in gaming, especially after what they announced in this conference. But as far as getting like hot, the like Sony Studios quality of gaming, mm -hmm. like I don't, I don't know if Microsoft will reach it. Now, Ninja Theory can, but they're going to take forever to do it. And it's one, some of these other studios got to step up and do it as well. Or you're, or I mean, then again. I mean, I'm not opposed to paying six dollars or ten dollars a month to have Game Pass. Yeah. So I mean, it might be worth it to them, but and, and you know, Phil said that Sony is not their competition. Their competition yeah. is more like uh, what Amazon or uh, X uh, or Google, because they don't want to compete with the best. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. <laughs> like. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean. They're definitely doing better than Google. Uh, I mean, they're doing everything oh. that Google's doing by far um, better. Um, so, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm still hopeful. Like, I mean, I, maybe I'm just dumb and optimistic 
or whatever. Uh, the thing is, like, there, I just don't feel any need to be like ugly about any of it. And I'm not saying that you are. Uh, I'm just saying, like, like I'm not been out of shape because this conference wasn't great. It wasn't the best it could be. I, I, I'm enjoy. I'm excited to see these games at a later date when they're gonna ever come out. Um, but I do ultimately agree that I don't have a reason to buy like. However, I'm going to spend my five hundred, six hundred dollars this year. And I, I highly doubt it'll be for a Series X. I mean, I know it's not going. I know I'm going to buy a PS5. That's just how it's going to be. Uh, but like to even consider buying even a One X just to be in the ecosystem, I don't even know if I'd be interested in doing that. No, so, I'm more interested in upgrading my computer just a hair to uh, maybe like because it needs a new motherboard processor kind of stuff. But I'm more interested in doing that than dropping six hundred dollars on a console that i'm only going to use for what i don't i don't have to use it for exclusives i have a i have a pc that could pretty much play anything they want because they can play xbox one one x style games like yeah i can watch 4k on it so right now my pc is at least as good or if not better than a one x mm-hmm. so like why would i spend that yeah, and I'm I'm paying six dollars a month regardless. For, but yeah, but I could, you know, I I, I don't know. I just I was, no, I, I, and, I, and I'm still, and I'm and I'm still, uh, I'm I'm still interested to see what they're doing at the initiative. Mm-hmm. Um, I want that team to blow me away. I see them all the time on Twitter saying, "Hey, we're hiring for this, this, and that." Um, uh, you know, I don't think I don't think they're fooling around over there. Um. And whenever they have something to show, I'm sure they'll show it. I'm just, I'm just disappointed they didn't have a, a strong showing here. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully, at the new in the next one, they'll have something from the initiative. I just hope they have like one huge game that's not Halo that'll ring us into the new year, the new year of gaming. And I will reiterate that um, I don't like this summer of gaming. Like everything's got to have multiple shows. Oh, we got more to show you later. Like. E3 week was great. We got everything we needed in that week. And then if there was little details, you could sparse that out throughout the year. But like we got the meat and potatoes. We would have already known the prices and release dates for for both these machines at this point. Mm-hmm. Um they might have got delayed at this point because of the COVID stuff, but even still, I think like the way it's being done right now is not great. Um, at least the, at least this method i think next year uh, will hopefully be more refined mm. um, but this scattershot approach to there's a hundred different shows and everything's got its own day and time and like i think it yeah. makes it just too scatterbrained for anybody to keep yeah. up with and i think a lot of that has a byproduct of like we don't know how long things are going to take right now because we just never operated in this capacity so that's why I think they've segmented it. But I do agree that next year, for the most part of next year, we'll probably still be working from home, quote unquote, or some form of, I mean, I still don't, I don't think there's going to be any three or the equivalent of whatever that is next year. I think we'll be mainly doing what we're doing again, that what we're doing now. But I do think that they'll have figured out, okay, this is how long it's actually going to take us for us to build something for this game. So yeah, like, we can do it all in one week. If that has to be in the middle of August rather than the middle of June, like that's fine. But right, right. Yeah. I think just having some kind of structure, some kind of calendar of events, um, which I think has been tried to do by Jeff Keeley and IGN and uh, others that tr- tried to put together some form of like organi- organized event. But I think they all just need to come together and agree to a week in the summer. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. two weeks, but just give us some kind of like condensed, confined space of here's when the announcements are going to go because um, every independent showcase doesn't need to have its own day, its own time, or you know, and like we could do more events in the same day, you know? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, is there any other uh, bits of news you wanted? To sh- Oops. Just throw your mic. 
forgive me. Is there any bits of news <laughs> that you wanted to share uh, before we wrap up? I hear G4. It might be coming back next year. Um, yeah. Um, I, I can't imagine today. what that looks like. Um, it looks yeah. like I'm, uh, I don't know. Was this, was this an IGN like collaboration or something? I saw something I like so. IGN uh, posted something about G4 specifically. Well, I mean, like, they probably just shared the news. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, it looked like it was a collaboration. So I'm not mm-hmm. sure. Um, are they going to try to bring Adam Sessler back? Can he be brought back? I don't know. Yeah. Um, should they bring him back? But because <laughs> I mean, I, I, I didn't even realize X, uh, X play had its own Twitter. Like, I didn't think that was around when Twitter started. Oh, yeah, but I guess I, I didn't think about that either. Because uh, I saw him tweet like I, that, that was a because he, he, he quote tweeted uh, X plays like we never stopped playing or something. Yeah. He's like, that's a Twitter I never thought I'd see again. And I was like, I didn't that's know they ever had a Twitter. <laughs> yeah that's funny yeah uh, uh, i mean that's mainly what the week was i mean there's some tidbits of other stuff but that's the crux of the stuff uh, i would say um i think that's about it uh i don't i, I can't think i mean uh i'm sure we'll get some xbox drip feed drip fed like post-mortem kind of stuff just like the you know quote about uh, Halo Infinite being a, uh, an old build or yeah. wasn't the most recent build or something. I'm like, okay, I mean, you could say that, but uh, it's really just like trying to put out the fire now instead of yeah. like leading with something. I don't know. Yeah. But um, Well, that's the news for this week. Uh, stay tuned later this week where we um, will be on Where Gaming Weekly talking about more of our impressions of Ghost of Tsushima and more of some of this conversation and maybe like check in with our favorite games of the year so far. Have, have you seen some of the uh, uh, the the bugs? Yeah, yeah, I've seen quite a few bugs. Um, I, I haven't run into any of these bugs, no, 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 but, right. they are, but they are hilarious. I mean, I've, I've run into like the, the high jump uh, bug where you try to grapple onto like a ledge and it just flies up in the air but like the cement arms like where they're like stuck to his body those are oh, hilarious yeah um, yeah, one, yeah. where he's playing the flute yeah yeah and um, uh I, and then i was watching these and there were uh, i it was the first time i'd heard it in english uh oh I was just watching it and then I heard them say it and I, I didn't, it didn't even register that I heard it in English. And I was like, I remember this part and you know, I heard him say what I, what, what I read. And I was like, hang on. And he talked again. I was like, that's not his voice. And then he talked to him. I was like, hang on, that's English. Yeah. <laughs> did it I can like understand what you, that. Uh, did it sound like yeah, what you said? That, right? Yeah. It sounds like bad, like really stiff English like like japanese dialogue sure it's got yeah. it's got you know the the japanese um accent mm-hmm. um, and it's not like yeah. super strong but it's there and it just feels like out of place <laughs> yeah i mean i think playing in japanese is the way to go anyway yeah no. um but that's all the news we have for you this week uh that's right and we'll talk to you on where gaming weekly next week um, you can follow me at Speak Nicklish on Facebook, uh, on Twitter and Instagram. And you can follow me at Joss1015 on uh, Twitter. And you follow the channel at WearGaming underscore. And I guess until next time, say goodbye, Nick. Bye, Nick.